everyone, it's Michaela again over at the Flathead Conservation District. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how we can reduce the amount of pollution in our waterways by implementing different land management practices. So if you recall from our last video, we talked about different sources of pollution that we might find here in our watershed. We then discussed why we might find them in our watershed. And then we saw what happened to them during a runoff event. So it's important to remember that in a runoff event, that is either a, could be during a rainstorm or during snowmelt in the spring. When this occurs, if there's so much water, the ground can't soak all of it up. And ultimately some of that water has to run across our landscape. And when it runs across our landscape, it's able to pick up all these little pollutants that we find in our watershed and then brings it down here into our lake. And ultimately that leaves our lakes, our rivers, or other bodies of water fairly polluted. So today I wanna to talk a little bit about the different things that we can do to reduce the amount of pollution and then demonstrate that here with the Enviroscape. So when it comes to reducing pollution in our environment, it's fairly important to think about some of the natural features that we have on our landscape that are already doing this work for us. So this would include things such as wetlands or vegetation that is along our riverbanks or our lake shores. And so with that, it's important to protect these areas or also do things that could mimic the same services that they provide. So wetlands are found where the land starts to end and then the water begins. And they provide so many beneficial functions to help reducing pollution by absorbing and holding water intercepting and filtering out runoff, as well as being able to trap sediment. And these are just a few of their many functions. Now let's look over all the different types that we might find in our watershed. So one way that we can take advantage of the functions that wetlands provide is by restoring them to their natural condition if they were impacted or removed for development purposes. So we are going to restore one down here at our marina, up here near our factory, and then a seasonal wetland that we found in our construction site. Another way that we can utilize the benefits that wetlands provide us is by constructing artificial wetlands. Now these are going to be normally placed in areas that we know have a lot of polluted runoff. So we might put one over at our golf course to help control pesticide and fertilizer runoff. Also put them at our shopping center because we know there's going to be a lot of storm water, water coming off of our impervious surfaces. We also are going to place one over at our factory that is specifically designed to pretreat the factory wastewater. And then also one at our stormwater drain outfall. And this will help trap pollutants before the water reaches our water body. So we can also protect our wetlands to improve their ability to control flooding and help filter out more pollution. So we are going to build a small dam where our farm field drains to, and this will slow down runoff, allowing time for the wetland to absorb and filter the runoff. We are also going to protect our riparian wetland here by the livestock by adding a water trough and then building a fence between the farm animals, animals and riparian wetland to uh, reduce the amount of bank erosion. Vegetation such as trees and other native plants can also reduce water pollution by acting as a buffer. So the plants are able to soak up some of the runoff water and then filter out the pollutants from that water. So we are going to add some undisturbed vegetation at the base of our forest to allow some of the sediment from the runoff to be trapped and filtered. We'll also place some trees and other vegetation along our uh, shoreline wetlands and then also on our wetlands that are alongside the riverway as well as more in our forest areas to represent more sustainable forestry practices. 
Okay, so now when we take a look across our watershed, we can see that it looks a, quite a bit different now that we've implemented some of our land management practices. So we see a lot of wetlands, that these were either restored to their natural form, they were protected, or they were constructed. We also have a lot more vegetation in multiple areas as well. We built a rain garden. We have a livestock fencing area to keep the livestock from eroding the stream bank. And so I wanna just keep in mind that there are some other things that we can do at a individual level such as picking up our animal waste at the park or on our lawns. We can also, when we wash our cars, take it to the car wash rather than washing our car on the driveway where all that soap eventually is gonna make it way, its way to our lakes. Um, another thing we can do is pick up litter. So that will um, also make a big difference. And then another thing is pesticides and fertilizers. Now, as we mentioned in the last video, they become a problem when they're applied in excess. So what we can do is only apply what our lawns need, what our crops need, and that way there is less that's gonna get carried into our waterways. So keeping all these different things in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and place all our pollutants again out on our landscape, and then we will see what happens to it when it rains now that we have all of our land management practices in place. All right, so I've now placed all the same pollutants that we saw in our last video across our landscape. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when it rains. Let's talk a little bit about what happened to both our pollutants and to our water from the runoff uh, now that we have all our different land management practices in place. Now from what I can see is that our lake is a lot less dirty and there's also a lot less water in it uh, than from our previous demonstration. Let me show you a picture just comparing the two. So seeing the difference before and after we implemented different land management practices, we can see that having things such as vegetation, uh, wetlands, rain gardens, uh, riparian vegetation, that all these things can help reduce the amount of pollution that makes its way into our waterways, and it also reduces the total amount of water. Now it's important to remember that if it's reducing the amount of water, that it's giving time for plants and other things to naturally filter out these pollutants. So let's take a closer look at how this actually happened. So we're gonna go around and squeeze out some of our sponges and take a closer look at how the color changed on some of them. And so what we're gonna find is that our wetlands and vegetation soaked up a lot of our precipitation, reducing the volume of runoff water that made its way into our lake. We can also see by how a lot of the sponges are a lot darker that they also absor absorb some of our pollutants. So as the rain soaked into each of the wetlands and also into our vegetation, it's able to trap sediment and other materials and filter out our nutrients and chemicals in the water before the pollutants can travel downstream into our surface waters. So it's really important to note that the vegetation and the wetlands are constantly working to improve our water quality. So hopefully after seeing this demonstration, you can now understand a little bit more about how implementing different land management practices can help reduce the amount of pollution that ends up in our waterways. And it's also important to remember that there are a lot of different things that we can do at an individual level as well. So let's all do our part to help take care of our watershed and reduce the amount of pollution that ends up in our waterways.